Welcome to this episode of CPS 360 Sports. I'm Hudson Summerall. And I'm Thomas Eaton. The Kansas City Chiefs got the win against the Denver Broncos on Sunday Night Football 22-9. The Chiefs' offense didn't have their greatest game of the season, only scoring one touchdown on their first possession of the game, but the Chiefs' defense stepped up big. Broncos quarterback Teddy Bridgewater threw two interceptions, one returned for a touchdown by Daniel Sorensen. With the win, the Chiefs retained sole possession of the AFC West with an 8-4 record and now have won five straight games. The Chiefs host the Raiders next Sunday. The Mizzou Tigers took on the Florida Gators in a nail-biting game that came down to the very last play. The Tigers barely edged out a victory with a two-point conversion in overtime to ice the game. Mizzou leaned heavily on the run, giving Tyler Beatty the ball 27 times, which he turned into 146 yards and a touchdown, averaging 5.4 yards per carry. Mizzou kicker Harrison Mevis, who has been great all year for the Tigers, went 3-4 for four on the day with his only miss coming from a 46-yard try to win the game with a minute left to go that barely missed past the right upright. The final score was 24-23. Sophomore cross-country runner Andrew Hauser at Rockbridge has had arguably the most successful seasons of any Missourian runner of all time. Andrew won the Class 5 Missouri State Championship meet with a course record time of 14 minutes and 52 seconds. A week later, Andrew won the Nike Midwest Regional Championship race in Terre Haute, Indiana, becoming the first Missourian to ever win the meet. And on December 4th in Huntsville, Alabama, Andrew ran the fastest Missouri time in state history with a time of 14 minutes and 38 seconds. Andrew looks to add to his spectacular sophomore year this spring on the track. The Rockbridge Bruins took on the Marshall Owls in their season opener with high hopes for the upcoming season. It had been over a decade since these two teams had played, and this game marked the third time that the teams had played. In their previous two games, Rockbridge averaged 76 points per game while only allowing 31. The theme of the past games continued onto this one as Rockbridge dominated the game with a final score of 66 to 23. Rockbridge's next games will happen at the Fog Allen Tournament in Independence, Missouri, as they look to continue their undefeated season. On December 5th, the College Football Playoff Selection Committee announced the four teams they selected for the playoff, Alabama, Michigan, Georgia, and Cincinnati. So we asked some CPS students who they think will win the championship. Up next, Nick catches us up on some highlights from early season basketball action. The Rockbridge Bruins faced off at home against the Kansas City East Bears last Friday night. Starting things off, Sam Kaiser has a nice drive into the lane and gets the easy layup. Later on, Reese Minnick throws out a nice two-hand slam to extend Rockbridge's already big lead. Many Rockbridge's starters were out, which lets some younger players such as Minnick to get some time, and here he draws a foul and makes his free throw. This was a nice bounce back game for the Bruins who lost a close one last Friday night to Pattonville in the Norm Stewart Classic. So here's Ty Wells with the ball and later on he converts on a layup of his own. Rockbridge's record improves to 4-3 and three, and their next game is over two weeks away as they play another Kansas City team in KC Central. While the East Bears fall to 1-9 and nine on the season as the final score was 88-43. to 43. Rockbridge Bruins faced off against Pattonville on Friday in the Norm Stewart Classic at Mizzou Arena. Rockbridge started off hot as Hudson Dircher opened the scoring with a three off an inbound play. Rockbridge led 11-6 at the end of the first quarter. Rockbridge continued its good play in the second as Hudson Dircher hits another three and the student section was loving it. Sam Kaiser's three falls short, but junior Mark Hagesack was there to get the putback jumper. Rockbridge led Pattonville 25-21 going into the half. After the half, both teams were drilling shots, including Pattonville's Justin Coleman. Pattonville slowly erased Rockbridge's lead in the second half. The game was tied through three quarters. After Pattonville nailed a shot to take the lead with 20 seconds left, Rockbridge had the chance to win and ultimately could not get a shot up, so the game ended 53-52 Pattonville. And now we have some highlights from Luke of some more Rockbridge girls basketball. 
the Lady Bruins basketball team took on their crosstown rival, the Battle Spartans. Senior standouts Avery Kroenke and KK Brody led the Bruins through a 56-45 win over the Lady Spartans. Things started off hot, and Avery Kroenke kept it that way with a career night of 29 points. She's also announced her commit commitment to Mizzou since. Freshman Mari Miller didn't look like a freshman, showing off all of her all of her nice smooth skills. Avery Kroenke looked dominant whilst dropping a career high, and Pepperdine commit KK Brody showcased her D1 post moves and ate up the Spartans. It was a close game going into the fourth quarter, tied up 40 to 40, but the Bruins pulled away, winning 56 to 45, showing their town domination. The JV girls basketball team also faced the Battle Spartans. The JV girls really showed their defense in this one. The Battle Spartans didn't score a single point in, in the first three quarters. The final score was 47 to 7. Sophomore Kate Vollmer led all scorers with 13. The young Bruins have a lot of talent for the future years. Freshman Tyler McAllister showed off her hard work. She had a good night with also with 10 points and made great plays on the defensive side of the ball. The Lady Bruins have a bright future ahead of them, especially on the defensive side. JV girls win 47-7. The college football season hasn't even ended yet, and we've already had shakeups at the head coaching positions in major schools. Following a loss to Oklahoma State, Oklahoma head coach Lincoln Riley announced the next morning that he was taking the head coaching position at USC. Lincoln Riley was rumored to be a coach at LSU who was in need of a new coach after the plan to move on from Ed Ogeron at the end of the year. LSU hired Notre Dame head coach Brian Kelly. Kelly will receive a 10-year deal worth north of $100 million from LSU. Brian Kelly joins LSU after posting a 92-32 record at Notre Dame over the last 12 seasons. Today came with a huge shock in the golf world as one of the greatest golfers of all time announced his retirement from professional golf. Tiger Woods' major victories include the five Masters tournaments, four PGA championships, three U.S. Open championships, and three British Open championships. With his second Masters victory in 2001, Tiger became the first golfer to ever hold all four professional major championships at the same time. Tiger Woods was able to accomplish a lot in his almost 19-year career, but it was also a career plagued with injuries that finally caught up to him and ultimately heavily played into his retirement decision. After being canceled last year due to COVID, college football's biggest rivalry was back this season with Ohio State visiting Michigan in Ann Arbor. Here's Michigan's first driver team. McNamara fakes the pass, handoff to A.J. Henning, who follows his blockers, gets into the end zone, 7-0 Wolverines, they strike first. But Ohio State's next possession, running back to true freshman Travion Henderson, shakes a tackle up the sideline for 28 yards, that would set up a field goal. Next Buckeye possession, Stroud up to C.J. Wilson, nice catch, 10-7 Buckeyes, Wolverines would respond, deep pass from McNamara to the two-yard line, that would set up Hassan Haskins jumping over defense, Michigan would take a 14-13 lead into the half. First Wolverine possession out of halftime, Blake Corum running away from the defenders all the way down to the 13-yard line. Very next play, trying to find the end zone. Here's running back Hassan Haskins again, follows his blockers. This would be a 21-13 game after this touchdown. And then Michigan would find itself in a goal-to-go situation from the one. They give it to Haskins, 28-13 Michigan. But Travion Henderson, close call. He would get in, 28-20. Again, another goal-to-go -goal situation. And Haskins, touchdown number four. Key fourth down here for the Buckeyes. Stroud over to Henderson, gets into the end zone. One possession game, but Michigan relied on its run game. Haskins breaks this one free over a defender down to the four yard line. And this next play, too easy. Hassan Haskins, that's touchdown, count him. One, two, three, four. Five touchdowns for Hassan Haskins. Michigan beats their rival Ohio State 42 to 27. This Thanksgiving, the Raiders took on the Cowboys in a game that all of America tuned in to watch. This Thanksgiving, the Cowboys and the Raiders played in what was the most watched football game of all time in NFL history. And the Raiders got the game started out quick with this long touchdown from Deshaun Jackson, 
who they acquired on the free agent market three weeks ago. And then, after a back and forth first half by the Cowboys and Raiders, Tony Pollard got the second half rolling for the Cowboys with this electrifying 101 yard kick return to the house. And then, later in the fourth quarter, the Cowboys were down eight and they needed a drive down the field with three minutes left. They got it started with a long throw to Michael Gallup. And then Dak Prescott threw this dart down the middle of the field for the touchdown. Dalton Schultz would also score this two point conversion later. The final score to the game was 36-33 Raiders. Well, that wraps up this episode of CPS 360 Sports. I'm Hudson Summerall. And I'm Thomas Eaton. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.